this past season of anime, we have had the new Boogie Pop anime series. This is not the first time Boogie Pop's been anim adapted to anime. Sort of. I should clarify that. This is not the first Boogie Pop anime. It is the first time Boogie Pop has been adapted. The earlier Boogie Pop anime series, Boogie Pop Phantom, from back in the 2000s, like early 2000s, late 90s-ish, was strictly a, uh, ad a new work, a side story-ish thing within the continuity of the Boogie Pop light novel series. And so this year, with the new Boogie Pop anime, titled Boogie Pop and Others, after the first book, I figured, in addition to watching the anime, I would also read the light novels, as the first six novels have been released in an omnibus collection, or two omnibus collections, by Seven Seas. Uh, the first book, covering books one through three, and the second one, covering books four through six. So, this time I'll be covering one through three. Later on, I will review books, um, the, the, the second half of the series. So, the first omnibus, again, the first three novels, this is actually closer to two books, to well, two stories, um, because it's the first book, Boogie Pop and Others, also titled, really titled Boogie Pop Doesn't Smile, and the second being. Boogie Pop versus Imaginator, parts one and two. So you can just stick those together and just versus Imaginator. So, not to get too spoiler on this, because also the show is still airing, and the books are being re-released now after a long time out of print, so don't want to spoil too much here. Um, the books are set around the fictitious school of... Shinyo Academy. I have notes over here. I mean, print notes this time instead of cute cards. Um, and they follow the title character. Okay, they don't follow the title character of Boogie Pop, nor a s character who has a similar, similar aims. Um, the quote unquote Fire Witch, uh, Rina Nagi. They follow a variety of ancillary characters. Some who are directly involved in the plot. All of them are directly involved in the plot in some manner or another, but are not necessarily... I would say... Actively hunting trouble. They just get caught up in it. And... The story is basically end up leading into the course of these main mysteries. In the first book, it's the mystery of a entity known as Manticore, who is killing people. And characters trying to find, okay, who is or what is Manticore, and why are they doing this, and why are they doing this? And There's the implication of, okay, Manticore is in disguise as a, as a human, so who are they for really? It's very, to be honest, uh, who's the werewolf kind of mystery? Sort of such scenario. And then versus Imaginator is more involved because you have the not so much the introduction, but the more active involvement of an organization of a group called the Toa Organization, along with the titular Imaginator as an antagonist. And the main point of view characters are various students or prospective students at the academy, and how their daily lives end up intersecting with this plot. And the way the narrative works is it's very non-linear. Sort of. I describe... If I was to chart out the, the plot of the story, it's like a Gantt chart. Those of you who've taken organizational planning classes know what this is. Those of you who don't are, like, scrambling to Google right now, like, what the hell is a Gantt chart and how the hell do you spell it? A uh, Gantt chart or... Um, G A N T T chart, I believe. Correct spelling. I am probably going to be correct at the comments. Um, the way it works is if you're doing organizational planning or, the, or doing a project planning, is you have a bunch of you have a timeline, 
and you have a bunch of rows for what steps come when, what things kick in where as far as overlap, and when there are hands off, handoffs and that sort of thing um, along the project. And that's kind of how this works here is each chapter focuses on a single point of view character, follows that point of view character along a line, more or less, and then when they start the next chapter or the next section, we bounce to a different point of view character who will be in a different point in the timeline. And these characters will, sometimes their timelines will overlap. Sometimes their timelines will not. And like you'll have events occurring concurrently, concurrently, and you'll see what's going on from a particular character's perspective. Um, or the same events from different characters' perspectives, I should say. I should say. On other occasions, events will be happening concurrently, but you don't necessarily know that these two events are happening concurrently until, like, you come to a certain point and they're like, okay, that's why this person is not present there, that sort of thing. And that's cut, and so... Each character has a very limited point of view of what's going on, and as the book plays out, you're putting together the pieces bouncing from each of these different characters' points of view. At no point in here is Boogie Pop a point of view character. Boogie Pop is a person whose impressions we get of based on how other characters view them. And it bears mentioning that while our narrative is third-person point of view, um, we never at any point go into third-person om omniscient. We know how an individual character is thinking, we don't know how every character in a scene is thinking. And consequently, we at no point do we get a ambivalent or neutral perspective on who or what Boogie Pop is. We we know some details early on in the first book. We can get information that a Boogie Pop is a particular person, that it is a personality of that person, and that the person is not aware of that personality. We know what the general student populace perceives as perceives Boogie Pop to be through urban legends and that sort of thing and the rumor mill. And we also learn moderately early on that those rumors are at least part wrong, possibly all wrong, and so forth and so on going forward. And it makes for a very engrossing read for each of the individual stories. We get what the narrative is, we get what these char get characters perspectives are, in some cases, what their motivation and goals are, but again, you have to be paying attention to put the whole picture together, and I appreciate that. I love these sorts of investigative mind-screw anime manga and that sort of thing. I'm reading 20th Century Boys right now. I loved this bit in Eve the Metal Idol. I loved it in Serial Experiments Lane. This is very much of a kind with those works which makes sense because these works were all kind of coming out around the same time. The book is not without some significant flaws, though, because aside from the antagonist of the first book, Manticore, the rest of the motivations of the antagonists are very abstract. I mean, I can dig pro um, antagonists whose objectives are arbitrary, um, like, we will join all of humanity into one consciousness to make, to bring about world peace, because it's, it's arbitrary, but concrete. It's, they have a reason for wanting to do the thing. They have made a jump at some point, a cognitive leap to decide, okay, the way to get from A to B is... Pi, but which is, uh, but we, we, we get that they think that pi will lead them to that it go that the goal is farther. The route to from A to B takes you through pi. You can't go, you can't get to B without pi. 
Now I'm hungry for pie. But anyway. Um, point being that there is a sense there. We don't necessarily get a full explanation. We don't get a full exploration of how they've structured their logic. And, I mean, to a certain degree, the whole point of going A to pi to B is there is no logic to this, but it makes sense within the minds of those characters, and that's what counts. Um, and we are not necessarily in the heads of those characters as point-of-view characters. We see them express their perspective, but we also see, for various reasons, that what is coming out of their mouths is not necessarily trustworthy either. Whereas in Boogie Pop, in some cases, antagonists are absolutely narrative perspective characters. Um, our point of view characters. We are introduced in the second book to the character, to a person, I'm again trying not to spoil too much. Um, and there is a operative through whom Imaginator is working, and there is an operative through for through whom the Toa organization is operating. And we get and we get at least for brief points here here and there, point of view perspectives for those characters. And we get an idea of okay, this is kind of what they're trying for, but maybe it's not clear. We know to continue this with this analogy earlier of plotting a route from A to B is we don't exactly know what B is. Or rather, A to B to C, I should say. Um, we know where A is. Possibly. Actually, not even that in some cases. For the Toa organization, we don't know C. We don't know what they're, where they're going. We don't know A, where they're coming from. But we know that their course is taking them through Pi. For the other antagonist, the one working with Imaginator, again, for Imaginator, where they're going and where they're from is a mystery. Like the, the, the core entity of Imaginator, where they're going, where they're from is a mystery. But we know, again, their route is taking them through Pi, in which case having them operate through this third party, and in turn, their route is A to Pi. You presumably C, but we don't know what C is. So again, so we, we have A and B. C is a blank variable. And that sort of thing. And that bit is kind of narratively frustrating. It's I mean, I could work with it. I can deal with weird, ambiguous villain objectives in anime and manga. It's I got into an, I got into anime and manga in the 90s. Old Taku. I'm used to this sort of convoluted, out-there, weird, nonsense stuff going on. I dig it. I can, I can handle it. Other people possibly won't. Um, once we got into like the 2000s and the 2010s, we kind of started stepping away from the, for lack of a better term, Evangelion emulation of doing, of antagonists who have objectives who are not necessarily who are arbitrary and not necessarily spelled out well or again stepping we step, we step away from the a to pi to c logic and more towards a to b to c um with maybe some slight weird detours but it's a more clear cut route and in a way going back to this weirdness is kind of refreshing to me and i appreciate that but it's not, I can tell it's something that other people will bounce off of and bounce off of hard. So that's kind of my vibe for this. I enjoyed these two stories in one giant omnibus. It's engrossing enough and kind of light enough reading that I, that I kind of plowed through these books in like a couple of weeks. Like around the time that the last episode of Imaginator aired is around the time that my local library got a copy of Omnibus One, and I put it on hold, picked it up, and I finished it like earlier this week as of when I'm recording this, which is second week of March. So the current anime season is, isn't even quite over yet. So the Boogie Pop is still airing. 
as of when I'm recording this. So that kind of give the perspective of how much this motivated me to churn to keep going through the story. It engrossed me, it drew me in, and kept me sticking with it at a very brisk pace. And its pacing was enough that it didn't take as long to go through necessarily as say also print size and other stuff in mind that it prevents it from being as much of a slow read to get through as say a bullet stopper like well my copy of it I'm going through right now in anticipation of the movie so that sort of thing I enjoyed the book I will have affiliate links below on the YouTube channel and on the blog for where you can get the book either through Amazon or through Write Stuff the Omnibus has not gotten a Kindle edition. I believe the three books individually have gotten Kindle releases or ebook releases on the various platforms if you're choosing. Um, I mean, I think it's at least just Kindle. I don't know if it's on uh, Bookwalker. I'll have to double check. If it is, I will post a link there. It won't be in, Bookwalker link won't be an affiliate link because I don't have a Bookwalker affiliate code set up yet. But if it's on Bookwalker, I'll stick a link down there, too. And the next time, checking my little calendar here. So, um, next episode of Legend, Legends of the Force for this month, I'll be wrapping up the Dark Horse Empire series, sort of, with Empire's End. Or they say the Emperor Reborn series with Empire's End, and then the next episode of Breaking It All Down for this month will be a look at the new Hellboy movie. Uh, I'm planning to see that opening weekend, and I will have a vlog style review of that as well. So until later, till then, catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.